Hi, this is General Farmer, and welcome back to the next episode of my tutorial on Let's Play. I'm going to show you today how to build a, uh, a couple of simple farms that will make our standard of living a lot better around here. First, I'm going to do a cow grinder, which is very simple. Um, what I'm going to show you right now is how to make a hopper, a chest with four ingots around it. And hoppers are wonderful because they will take anything that is dropped into them and feed it into wherever the, the nozzle of the hopper goes. In this case, we're going to drop uh, cow beef and leather, and we're going to drop it into a uh, chest. And then I made some oak fences you saw from sticks and, and, uh, sticks and planks. And we're going to take these things out. Uh, and build a very simple cow grinder. And the way a cow grinder works is that uh, if you have more than 24 entities, in this case cows, in one block, uh, they will begin to die. The 25th and subsequent entities will be crushed, uh, including you. If you fall into a space with 24 entities in it, it will kill you. Um, so we're going to take advantage of that mechanic. You see here we put down a chest, put the hopper, uh, we click, we crouch and click the hopper into that chest, and that means anything that goes into the hopper will go into that chest. All right, so now I'm going to put some blocks around it. I'm going to build this up, and what we're going to do is lure two or more cows into this uh, little block, this little hole that we're going to make to trap them in and we need to make it at least two blocks deep so that the cows can't just jump up out of it. Um, I'm putting glass around it. It doesn't have to be glass. Uh, I'm going to put this torch here so that I can uh, click against it to place, an, place a uh, stair block in front. Um, and the reason I want to put a stair block there, you could also use a glass block, is that uh, if you put a solid block above a chest, you can't open the chest. But if you put a stair or slab or glass, something that's considered a transparent block, then you can still open the chest. All right, so you see here I've made a two deep hole. Um, and now I'm going to lure some cows into it. And I'm going to try to get them to fall into that hole, and they'll be unable to get out. I'm going to raise this just a little bit because it makes it easier to uh, trap the cows. Um, some of them we will need to kind of nudge and push in there. But if you can get the cows in there, um, and then we feed them hay, they will breed, and uh, we'll get, you know, three cows and four cows and five cows, and eventually we will have 24 cows in this little grinder. And from then on, when we feed them, when we breed them, and a baby cow is born, an adult cow will be killed. So now we're going to try to, I'm going to break my little pen here that we put the cows in in a previous episode. And we're going to lure these cows over and get them to fall into that little space. Mm -hmm. um, and the cows will follow you. I think you saw this before, but cows will follow you and sheep if you're holding hay or wheat rather. So I'm holding some wheat. The cows get attracted to it. They'll come, they'll follow me, um, and I'm going to climb up there, and they'll follow me up there, and then I'll kind of nudge them into this hole. All right. So let's see. Here come the cows. Uh, we got lucky there because one of his neighbor cows jumped up and bumped him in for us. Um, let's see if we can get some more to do that. If not, what we'll do is we'll get on that glass block ourselves and kind of bump into the cows and shove them in there. All right, I'm walking around because they're following my wheat, trying to get them to. <laughs> this is hard. I'm going to speed up through this part because this is long and tedious. It can be. Um, but you see, we've got four or five cows in there now. This last one proved to be a problem. I finally got down and just kind of pushed and shoved and nudged him in there. Come on. Come on, Mr. Cow. Get in there with your friends. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, this part can be tedious. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to take my wheat um, and, well, I'm going to remove these blocks for now because you don't really need them. Um, and then I'll take the fence rails that I made and I'm going to put, you only need one rail really right over the top of that open hole. And that's because once we start feeding these cows, um, we're going to put some water underneath them. Um, and what the water does is causes the cows to bob up to the surface, so it makes them easier to feed. Um, I think I probably should have put the water in on the lower block first. I can do it now, but it's a little bit more tricky. Um, and I, yeah, I waterlogged this, waterlogged that uh, stair block. That's a mistake. So let me see if I can pick up that water again. I think what I'm going to have to do is remove the stair block and then pick up that water again. Uh, if I had put the water in that lower block first, I could have, it would actually have been easier than what I'm doing here, but you can do it after the fact. I'm just going to take out the stair block and then pop the water uh, on top of that hopper. Lean, uh, or against the edge of the glass, right? And then I'm going to have to put that stair block back in like I had it against the edge of this log. All right, and there we go. And the water, you can see the cows are bobbing up and down. The water makes them bob up and down like that, um, which pushes them higher, uh, where, which is kind of where you need them to be. It makes them easier to feed. Um, and we'll feed two of them. And they will breed and make another, and we'll just continue that until, I think we have maybe five cows, six cows in there now. But we'll continue feeding them until eventually there will be 24 cows in that one block. And from then on, when we feed them, they will uh, be killed, and you'll get the leather and the meat, which will fall into the hopper and go into the chest. All right, so the second thing I want to show you, that cow farm is done. We just need to keep feeding the cows until we get to 24, and I'll come back to that. What I'm showing you here now is how to make some redstone torches, um, and then I'm going to take the redstone torches and make a redstone repeater, which is a redstone component that um, gives a signal strength of 15. If you're at all familiar with redstone, um, Redstone lines can carry power, but they can carry at a maximum of 50, if, if 15, if a full charge goes into it, which is a uh, power source of 15, then it will travel through the wire for 15 uh, blocks, and then it will cease uh, transmitting power. So what a repeater does is boost the power back up to 15. If you put a repeater along a line of redstone, it will return the signal to full strength. Um, and it will also push power into solid blocks like stone or dirt or something like that. So I'm going to make some pistons. You saw me make some pistons. Um, made some redstone torches, made some repeaters. What we're going to make next is an automated farm uh, where we will... It's not fully automated. You have to plant the soil but when the crops grow, we're going to flip a switch, and it's going to uh, harvest our crops, our seeds, and our wheat. Um, and then it will, uh, we can just replant, and it makes it go a whole lot faster. What I'm doing here is laying out kind of real quick just a pad where I'm going to build the farm. Um, and water w that we're going to use to harvest will flow eight blocks, so I'm making it... Uh, nine blocks wide so that we can flow the water right to the edge and then push it into a, another hopper and chest. Alright, so I'm going to build this little flat area real quick. Um, you see me counting out nine blocks. I ran out of stone. Come back, finish that up. Alright. And then... Once we get this the right length, uh, I want a back section. In the back section, we're going to put some pistons, um, which you saw me build. And when you, when you power a piston, it extends. 
for one block. Um, and what we're going to do is use that extended piston to hold some water in place so that the water does not flow um, until we retract the piston. So we're going to put in a whole line of pistons holding water back. And then when our crops are grown, we're going to flip a switch which unpowers the pistons uh, and allows the water to flow out, flow across our crops. And when water flows over crops, it breaks the crop, it harvests it, and it will also break the seeds. It will, um, when the weed is grow, when the fully grown weed is broken, it will drop wheat and seeds, and we'll keep the wheat. Uh, maybe to feed the cows with, maybe to feed ourselves with, or to breed villagers with. Um, and then the seeds we will replant to grow more wheat for all those purposes. So what I'm doing now here is making an area where I'm going to put my pistons. Okay. Go along here. Um, Alright. Finish up. So I have a one block deep gap there. I'm going to put the pistons in a line facing upward. And when these are extended, that section that's facing us will uh, extend one block higher. And you'll see that. I'm going to go around back and put redstone torches. Uh, now a redstone torch, uh, when it's glowing, its default state is glowing. When it's glowing, it gives out a redstone signal strength of 15 a full power signal. And so when we put them back behind these, uh, we're going to power the block that sits behind the pistons. And when we do that, it's going to activate those pistons and they are going to extend up one level um, and then block. Uh, we're going to put water above them, but the fact that they're extended will keep the water from flowing down. And that's how we, that's how we're going to harvest. So you'll see in this section up here at the top, there will be water. All right, so now I'm going to put, uh, clear out a little space here. I'm going to put the redstone torches behind these blocks, which are underneath the um, pistons, underneath the pistons, you see? The pistons are sitting on these cobblestone blocks, so when I send signal into the blocks, it's going to activate those pistons. And you'll see what that looks like. Hmm. There they are uh, retracted and the pistons are closed. Then we'll go around back and we'll put the redstone torches. And they will uh, extend the, they will extend those pistons. All right, see how the see how the torch is glowing. Okay, so when it's sitting there glowing like that, it powers the piston. So I put a put a torch behind every uh, behind every block, and you see the pistons have extended now. And above them, there will be a single space where we can put the water. So now I take that red thing out. You can see that one piston has retracted. Okay. The rest of them are still extended because their torches are still in place. <clears throat> put that back. and it pops back. All right, so now we're going to get some uh, the rest of our supplies, the hoppers, the chests, some soil, um, some dirt, and uh, a hopper, and also some redstone and a repeater, which is what we're going to use. We're going to run a line um, we're going to run a line uh, that to, of redstone that goes back to those redstone torches and when we flip a lever the redstone is going to power the torches now when you send power into a redstone torch it turns it off so the torches are on by default if you power the block that the redstone torch sits on it 
turns the torch off, so it allows you to invert the signal. We're going to have the signal essentially running full time, keeping those pistons extended, and then when we're ready to harvest, we'll invert the signal, we'll turn it off, and it will um, retract the pistons. All right, so speed this up, fill in all this dirt. Um, I actually did, you see here, I actually did put the pistons. Uh, I had forgotten to take the dirt into account, so my pistons are actually one block too low, but I'm going to go back and fix those in a little bit here. Um, and that's easily done. I just need to bring them up, put one more block underneath them, bring them up a little bit higher. But I'm going to box in the side so that when the water, when the water will flow from those pistons, we don't want it going over the side and washing our produce away. We want it going down along the edge of those cobblestone blocks and uh, sweeping our seeds and our wheat down to this little trough. And then when they get to this little trough, we'll put a bucket of water there. The little trough of water will push all the produce down to this point. Um, and I'm going to put a chest and a hopper here. And the produce will be swept down and the seeds will be swept down to here. They'll go into the hopper and the hopper will feed them into this chest. All right, and because we made this uh, little farm eight eight blocks wide, it uh, the water stops right at that point, which is perfect because it'll sweep them right down to that hopper and then not any further. All right. Well, we'll also put a we'll we'll put a stair block over top of that hopper too, so that you can actually get things stuck on the. Uh, stuck on the edge of the hopper that aren't getting sucked up in it. They'll essentially get swept right past the hopper and over that chest. Um, so I put some stair blocks over there so that I can still open it, but it uh, you don't end up with anything sitting on top of the chest and not swept into it. All right, and uh, now I'm going to go back and put the pistons where they're supposed to be. I accidentally raised it a little bit higher. Uh, I mean, raised them, raised the soil higher, so I need to raise the pistons up another block. Take out this real quick. Take all these pistons out, put in a line of cobble, put the pistons back. All right. It was kind of a dumb mistake, but other than time, uh, there was no particular harm done. Just go put them back now that they're higher. Um, and I'll run the redstone torches back behind them again to extend them. And then we will put water in here. And you'll be able to see how the pistons are holding the water back. Uh, or holding it away from flowing, back from flowing. All right. So I need to move the pistons. I mean, not the pistons. The redstone torches up also. I moved the pistons up, but now the... The wrong block is being powered, so let's go back behind them, put our torches back real quick. Um, and you see these pistons will be um, extended again, which is what we want. All right. So uh, our pistons are extended, but now the trick is we want them we want to be able to retract the pistons when our produce grows when our wheat grows um, right now all we have is wheat eventually we'll probably have carrots and potatoes so what we're going to do now is put repeaters um, and what a repeater will do is when we run signal to it it will push power into the blocks underneath the redstone torches which will cause the redstone torches to turn off which will retract the pistons as i said before so I'm making myself, giving myself a little room here to work um, and also to install these repeaters. The repeaters need a space to sit on. So I'm going to put one repeater going into each redstone torch. Fill in this space. Uh, you don't have to, it would be okay to leave a little bit of this space, but I like to fill it in because it looks a little more aesthetic and also because if you got a two block space, you could get mobs in here. In fact, if you get a one block, 
high space but two or three beside each other I think three is the magic number you can actually get spiders spawning in there even in a one block space so I like to fill those in um, and then also we will light it up a little bit to keep any mobs from spawning in any any blank spaces now I'm putting one extra repeater in there because this line of redstone I'm running uh, I believe is just long enough that it will lose power before it gets to that last repeater if I don't. So I'm adding one repeater in the line to boost the signal to full strength. And you see you just take a spot of um, redstone dust blah, 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 on each block and that creates a line. Now when I put a, a um, oh, I'm going to put a block over top of the last piece of redstone and a lever on it and what that will do is uh, when I flip the lever it'll power that piece of cobblestone which will power the redstone line underneath it um, and then it'll send that power all the way down the line through the repeater back into each of those repeaters that drives a redstone. Um, you see here I'm creating a lever from one cobble and one stick um, doesn't even cost you any redstone to make a lever but you see here when I power this block see how that whole line lights up and the pistons retract because I'm driving power into those redstone torches so they are becoming depowered unpowered and you see those pistons go up and down up and down when I flip the lever all right so now we need to put water um, up on top of these pistons and I don't think I showed you this when I made the well if you put two pieces of uh, I not pieces if you put two water sources uh, in each corner in, in diagonal corners of a four block space or two uh, two blocks away from each other with an empty space between them those two source blocks will flow together and create a source block in between them and the advantage of that is if you have one bucket you can make source blocks you see I made source blocks across the whole back of that by just placing a block I mean placing a source getting some water another bucket of water and placing it two blocks away from that one they flew they flowed together and made a source block in between and then I just kept repeating that I just kept placing another bucket of water two blocks over two blocks over until I had created water sources all above those pistons so you see now that that lever is on the repeaters are lit lit up they're driving power into the cobblestone which is uh, deactivating the redstone torches which causes the pistons to retract and the water to begin to flow across our crops so now I'm just gonna close all this up so it looks prettier and also so I don't get any mobs spawning in there um, and then I'm gonna add some cobble here to hide the redstone line because it looks a little ugly um, the other thing I don't know if you noticed me do I put some I've lit up the area in the back where the repeaters are um, and the reason you do that is to keep mobs from spawning and also because uh, when redstone lights up there is a block update that Minecraft detects um, and it can cause lag not it's not usually noticeable on a single player world if you were playing on a multiplayer server um, and a lot of people were had machinery like that going it tends to cause lag. Um, I just get in the habit of lighting up my redstones to prevent that lag. All right, so now our farm is basically uh, ready to plant. We have the pistons holding the water back. We have our water trough in the front that sweeps everything into the hopper. Um, and now we just need to get a hoe and till all this soil by right clicking. If you right click with a hoe on a dirt block, it becomes farmland um, we're gonna make all this into farmland oh I realize what I didn't do here yet is uh, farmland quickly dries out and becomes dirt again if you don't give it water so what I'm gonna need to do here real quick is go back and uh, take down the edges of these take down the cobble on the left and the right of this farm 
and put some water in there um, and that'll just irrigate the land and when you do this water will flow as I said it'll flow for eight blocks it will irrigate land within four blocks of it so if I run a little stream of water down each side it will uh, I'm gonna run one stream of water down both sides and since there are eight dirt blocks the one on the right will irrigate I'll, will irrigate four blocks uh, inward and the stream on the left will irrigate four, four blocks inward from that and that'll irrigate our entire farm um, and like I said if you irrigate land it remains farmland and it also causes your crops to grow faster so it's a good idea to irrigate I should have done that in the beginning and I just I simply forgot so I'm gonna go back and do it now all right um, if you till land and uh, if you till land and immediately plant it with seeds it will remain farmland but your things will not grow very quickly so it's a good idea um, to even though you could till and plant till and plant real quick before it reverted to dirt um, it's a good idea to irrigate your land it just helps out all around so I'm gonna go to my well get some water put a stream up here and you see it'll flow the whole eight block length so everything down that length is irrigated and everything four blocks left of that is irrigated and when I put this other stream on the right on the left hand side uh, four blocks of dirt to the right of that are irrigated and since our whole farm is only eight blocks wide that irrigates the entire farm all right so now I can go back and till again now that I've properly irrigated get my hoe out till everything and plant our weed seeds and then our farm is done and then we're just gonna wait for it to uh, grow we're just gonna wait for our wheat to grow and then I'll show you how it harvests um, now if you jump on farmland if you jump up in the air and land on it it will break turn back into dirt so be careful when you're planting your farm that you don't uh, you can walk on them but if you jump up and if you get up on a block on the side and and step off or something like that you can break it so I like to try not to stand on my farm or certainly not to jump around on my farm all right so we got that whole thing planted and now we will wait and I'll show you what both farms look like once they are working um, this one will need to wait for the weed to grow I'm gonna light up around here in the interim because uh, you see I stepped on that block when I was putting torches out um, light also will help crops grow faster so I like to light up as much as I can uh, I'm going a little bit overkill here you don't need to put this many torches okay guys so a little bit of time has gone by um, let's go check on it all right so you see our our wheat has all grown and we will be harvesting that um, I actually planted some beetroot there in the back because I had some beetroot seeds that we'd gotten from the village um, and then I've got about 24 23 or 24 cows in there so I'm going to show you how this works so I flip that lever you see the water flows down breaks all that wheat breaks all the seeds sweeps everything in there everything neatly goes into that chest um, it's taken a little while to get through the hopper um, I can flip the switch back and the land dries up with the exception of our little stream here and then we can get all our wheat seeds out of there and uh, beetroot seeds if we want it um and whoop, whoop whoop that's what happened all right so i'm going to need to fix this you see a few uh a few items went right through that little gap in the stair block and stopped on top of the chest um, so they did not get collected by the hopper so what i'm going to need to do is hop down there and get them and then i'll uh i will fix a little stair block above that in such a way that it'll stop the water 
Oh, I stopped the items from flowing down there. There, right now. No, 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 that's not right. I need that stair to be inverted. Um, let's see if we can do this. Uh, I want it to be, um, yeah, that's the way. So, no, that's not right either. Come on, let's do this. I want it to be literally upside down so the items don't get uh, don't get swept on top of the chest. This is proving annoyingly difficult to do. Alright, but we'll get it. There we go. Okay. So now that stair block will uh, keep things from uh, heavens. I gotta get out of here. I've sealed myself in. Alright. So I need to place the block there. And make escape. <laughs> Make a little escape for myself, put that back. All right. And put a solid block. No, nope, not there. I can't have a solid block there. I won't be able to uh, access my chest. So let's take that block out. But I did get the, you see the stair block is preventing anything from being swept past the, uh, past the hopper so everything should go right into the hopper now. now let's put the stair block back over the chest so we can still access it perfect all right so now we got all our produce we fixed that little error in the uh, collection system and our farm is good to go except for a little bit of aesthetics here there we go perfect okay um, and I got a little extra chest up there on top just to be my storage. I'll keep some hose in there and some seeds and maybe some wheat. Okay, but now we can replant this farm uh, after we take a little sleep. So let's go replant our farm and then we will uh, take our wheat that we got and feed our cows and you will see how the cow grinder works. Now you see I'm standing up here on the edge because I don't want to stand on my farmland. I'm going to plant from here um, and then I can go over and plant the other side. I actually can jump up on there as long as I don't leap a block up. I just jumped in the little water and uh, the little water trough and up on the other side. You just have to be careful and you know you make an, have a hoe or make a hoe if you need to and re-hoe the farmland. Um, I inevitably get excited and jumping around when I shouldn't be and I it's not uncommon for me to break some farmland and have to re-hoe it every so often but all right so I got that replanted. We'll let that keep growing. All right, so you see right now, we haven't reached the point where we're getting any cows ground, but we're gonna take these wheat and feed them just as many as we can to these cows. You see all the little hearts, which means they're having babies. And look, see, as they're having babies, they've reached the limit that can be in that one spot. And so now as they have a baby calf, an adult calf gets killed. Now the baby calves will not get killed by this, thank goodness, which, would not only be hard on our hearts, but would also not be productive because baby calves don't drop anything. But the adult calves are being crushed. Um, and look, we're getting leather and beef now. And this is a real turning point. If you're not real familiar with Minecraft, you may not recognize it. But for me, this is a huge turning point. When we get to the, to the point that we can start uh, producing a lot of beef and we can cook our beef, um, beef is a wonderful food source and it will restore your health and keep you f satisfied longer than almost any other food. Um, 
cooked pork chops and uh, I believe golden carrots are about the only things that compare to cooked steak. Cooked steak, cooked pork chops, and golden carrots are all very, the very best food sources in Minecraft. Okay, so I'm going to make a smoker. You saw how I did that with some, well, I made a furnace and then I used four logs to surround the furnace, make a smoker, and a smoker is the fastest way to cook food. Um, if you're cooking any type of food, potatoes, meat, uh, it cooks fastest in a smoker. The amount of fuel you need is the same. You still need, you can still cook eight steaks with one piece of coal. Um, it just cooks faster. It doesn't cook more efficiently, it just cooks more quickly. Alright, so there we go. Thank you guys for watching this. Um, and these two little forms between them are going to make a huge difference in our uh, daily life around here. I won't have to worry about food so much. And uh, I can even decorate a little bit. You see, if I take nine pieces of wheat, I can make a hay bale. And uh, they're very interesting looking decoration. All right. Well, thank you for watching.